Hey YouTube, today I wanna to talk to you about something that I am really passionate about. Let's head out to the garden. My desire for gardening originally came because I was interested in producing our own food. Bottom line, I didn't wanna be so dependent on the grocery store anymore, and um, you know, gardening, that just comes along with homesteading and sustainability. So today I wanna to talk to you about growing beauty. Now, that might be a strange wording, but there are all different kinds of gardens and there are all different methods of gardening. And really, I believe we have to find what works best for us personally. Now, some people may be totally into doing things in a utilitarian way where they put food in the ground in nice rows and they grow it, um, they spend time in their garden just to work and uh, some people are task oriented, that's just how they work, but I'm not one of those people. When I first got into gardening, I was quickly confronted with a very ugly truth about myself. And that is, I have a really hard time when it comes to follow through if I'm not interested in something. My first garden failed miserably. It was a tiny little plot in my backyard that honestly went completely to weeds. I didn't take care of it. I was completely uninterested in it. And even though I really sincerely desired to grow food, I viewed that garden as nothing but boring hard work with very little reward. At the end of that gardening season, I seriously considered never gardening again because I thought for all that work, I'd rather just buy the food at the store. Now, when I walk through my garden, I cannot tell you the joy that it brings me. Every single bit of it is so rewarding. This is my sanctuary. It is my hobby. It is my passion. I absolutely love to garden. It's crazy to me to imagine a time where it felt like nothing but grueling work. So what changed between a girl ready to give up on her 10 by 12 garden plot and a girl who currently maintains this 10,000 square foot garden and loves it. Well, I changed. I changed my mind about what gardening was going to be to me. I had to get honest with myself and come to the realization that if I was going to be a gardener, I was going to have to be passionate about it. I was going to have to love it and therefore gardening was going to have to be more than just a task. And that is what brought me to gardening for beauty. Now, the first thing that I really delved into was heirlooms. Um, the stories behind heirlooms made a world of difference for me. I uh, started out with the Baker Creek Seed Catalog and just reading their excerpts of different kinds of plants, tomatoes, peppers, melons, just all kinds of things, and it completely blew me away. Previously, I had just gone to the Home Depot and bought plants. Um, I did not pay any attention to what kind they were. I might have noted the color. Okay, I have a red tomato, I have a yellow tomato. You know, I have a green zucchini and a yellow squash. I have a watermelon, but I, I wasn't paying any attention to the variety at all. And if I did take any note of it, I certainly wasn't looking for certain varieties or anything like that. So the truth is, is I wasn't really that invested as far as interest goes in what I was growing. But when I got that seed catalog and I started to read the different stories behind different kinds of plants, you know, and the work and the effort that people had put into preserving those heirlooms, I suddenly became interested. I started small with just a few different kinds of seeds and that led me down the journey of truly becoming passionate about preserving heirlooms and about growing and trying different things that have been handed down from generation to generation. And in growing heirlooms, I discovered how absolutely beautiful different plants can be. They come in so many different sizes, shapes, 
and colors. They can be streaked and striped and have all different kinds of flavors. They can vary in size from big to small. And yeah, I'm just showing you the tomatoes. There are all kinds of incredibly wonderful plants you can grow from noodle beans to cucamelons to all different sizes and shapes of okras to rainbows that come in the form of chard to squash plants you've never even heard of before and melons you will never find in your grocery store. So in exploring the different kinds of vegetables and fruits that I was able to grow, I became so much more interested and so engaged in growing not just food to feed my family, but also stories that wouldn't be told otherwise and beautiful fruits and vegetables that I might not otherwise ever even see, much less get to eat. The next aspect that I really began to embrace was garden design. See, I had never heard the term potage before, but we started to build our garden and I knew that I was really wanting to do something extraordinary, that I didn't want to just put boring old rows in the ground that I would get tired of tending. So we started with the raised beds and then largely out of necessity, we built the arch trellises and began using these, these wire cattle panels to trellis all our different food. Honestly, because it's what I could afford, I wanted to, to grow 100 tomato plants and I could not afford to buy 100 tomato cages. So out of necessity, we began using these. But then one day I was scrolling through Pinterest and I came across this picture of a beautiful garden scene. It was a, you know, a foggy morning, my favorite times in the garden. And at the bottom it said potage. And I was like, I've never heard that term before. So I looked it up and I found <laughs> my people. I found the gardens of my dreams and so much inspiration and I also found the terminology to explain what I'm doing here in my garden. Historically, some of the first potage gardens that are written down are those that were in monasteries. They were typically uh, seen as places not only to feed the people of the monastery but also places of respite and healing. When I read that, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I have in my heart and this is exactly what I want my garden to be. Potage gardens emphasize beauty while still serving the purpose of feeding your family. They use mixes of flowers and herbs along with fruits and vegetables and they use line and structure in order to add interest to the design of the garden. I'm going to be doing a separate video on all of the details of how to design a potage garden. But right now, I'm just gonna point out a few of the basic aspects of garden design when you're looking to incorporate beauty and not just grow food. As in any art form, lines are so important whenever you are designing anything that you intend to be beautiful. As you can see in our garden, we've relied heavily on the lines of the beds and the arches of these trellises, as well as the lines of our trellis walls. Using the repetition of teepees, even though they are made of all different kinds of material, there is rhythm in those lines. Throughout every bed, we've added height, you by using trellises, by growing things that, um, that have a lot of height like sunflowers and um, in every single bed there are, uh, there are some point of interest with, with different trellises or uh, tall growing things. And throughout the whole garden we have used all different kinds of uh, decor. A lot of it um, is just little silly things that I will pick up for a dollar here and there whenever I find them on sale. Um, you know, some things like our, our funny little garden bed where we had that old headboard and footboard we were getting rid of, so I brought it down here. Just throughout the whole thing, I'm constantly thinking when I see things, will that look good in the garden? And um, I haven't spent just a whole lot of money on it, just been really resourceful when I can find things uh, for cheap or for free, but the idea is, is that I want to make this space inviting 
and warm. I don't want it to just feel like work. I want it to feel like rest. Growing heirlooms, garden design, and third, the thing that I have found that makes all the difference in growing beauty is um, being willing to give a little space to something that just makes you happy. These are my zinnias. We do not eat them, but they make me so happy. I actually had not grown a lot of flowers uh, prior to this year. Um, a little bit as far as companion planting goes, but this year I really decided to embrace full force um, Potage garden design, which incorporates a lot of ornamentals and a lot of flowers. So um, I planted these zinnias and when I did I thought oh I could plant more peppers here I could plant more you know kale here I could plant all these different things and and I kind of had a hard time giving up the space that could produce just for something that would simply be beautiful now they do attract in pollinators and that is very important in a garden but that's the wonderful thing about this type of gardening is is that not only is it good for the gardener it's also just good for the ecosystem all around because these pollinators they they benefit greatly from having flowers in the garden. Therefore, your plants benefit greatly from having flowers in the garden. But more than anything, I feel like it brings so much joy to this space that it's totally worth going ahead and giving up some space to flowers. Now, zinnias, they're just great for cutting. They bring in pollinators. However, there are a lot of flowers that you can plant that, um, you know, calendula, for instance, I've got some right here. It helps tomatoes. It keeps aphids off of tomatoes. Um, marigolds, of course, people have been planting those with their, um, with their plants, you know, tomatoes and peppers for a long time. They are great for pest deterrents. Here, I've got more more zinnias right here. But this year I put sunflowers in, which have brought in so many pollinators and they're just so beautiful. More than anything, I think we just have to embrace the mindset that um, we are gardening for our enjoyment as much as we are for um, sustainability. So in order to grow beauty, heirlooms to grow the stories, design to grow a work of art, flowers, just for the sake of making us happy. And the fourth thing that every garden needs, which is focused not just on functionality, but is focused also on beauty, is a chair. Now I've made an observation, and I am a notorious garden rubbernecker. I did almost drive my friend's car off the road, rubbernecking a garden. And since then I have sobered up because it is dangerous to drive so recklessly. However, I do drive a way into town that is 10 minutes longer than the alternate route because the longer way has more gardens to look at. I love to look at how other people grow food. And though it's just an observation, I've noticed that sometimes gardens don't have a chair anywhere in sight. And I can't help but wonder, where does that gardener drink their coffee? Because for me, I drink my coffee down here. I spend a significant amount of time in my garden, not working, but just resting. And so often I come down just to rest and the next thing I know, I've been tying up tomato plants and just singing and worshiping and just enjoying myself for, you know, a lot longer than I intended to be down here. And it doesn't feel like grueling work because it's my hobby and it's my passion and this is where I come to relax. I've noticed that the gardens that do not have a chair they go to weeds way sooner than the gardens that have the obvious presence of a gardener that rests and enjoys that space. I read once that the best fertilizer for a garden is the footsteps of the gardener. And I could not agree more. If we create a space that we enjoy being in, we will find more success in growing our food. If we are willing to put in the extra work to learn about heirlooms and to you know, build a garden design that intrigues us. Even if we don't have a lot of money, I mean, so many of these things that you see in my garden were, you know, were things that I got on clearance and at garage sales, you know, things that were, were cheap and that were just gathered up over time. But now this space feels personal to me. And so I love being here and I have this healthy garden and I was the girl who almost swore off of gardening. So I wanna encourage you to grow something lovely. 
just start, just decide to start. You don't have to end up with a 10,000 square foot garden right away. Though, if I'm being honest, you might. You might end up there because it's a little addicting whenever you get to the point that you are surrounded by beauty. You don't want to be anywhere else. Thank you guys. Until next time. <laughs>